Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to AgriFood Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is Tom Bunn. I'm an associate on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you all to our discussion today. AgriFood Conversations is all about driving innovation in food and ag. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is swine technologies. On today's call, we are joined by Fazal Walla, Edward Acevedo, Gavin McPherson and Ryan Moe of StoneX and Camera. StoneX's Camera predictive analytics software helps producers understand their risk and optimize operational efficiency and profitability by defining the entire livestock operation, including genetics, nutrition, and management. It covers more than 800 variables with best-in-class predictive accuracy and a what-if analyzer to provide insights into the actionable and most profitable solutions. Each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you to this conversation because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in StoneX and Camera's market. You are potential customers for their products and services. You've built a similar company, or you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities that they may face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. And while the poll is running, a couple process comments. We are not soliciting investment in any way whatsoever. This presentation is provide information to help StoneX and the camera system find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. Secondly, you can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time. We will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation, and we will have a dedicated Q&A &A, uh, portion. Alternatively, you can raise your hand and I can unmute you, and you can ask the team your question directly. Finally, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So if you know of anyone, if you can think of anyone who might want to hear this as you're listening, please keep that in mind as we distribute this far and wide after the recording is finished. So without further delay, I'm pleased to introduce the gentlemen joining us today, Fazal, Edward, Ryan, and Gavin. Thank you, gentlemen. Hey, thank you, Tom. Excited to be here. This is Ryan Moe here with StoneX, and we are the sales and distribution arm for Camera Predictive Analytics, which is a software and a system that has been designed and built by the Walla Group and its founder, Fazal Walla, who is on the call here with us today. Edward will be running through the slide presentation for us as Ed has been the head of our efforts of camera here over the last three years. And he is able to ask, answer any of the, you know, market-based questions. And if we have any, you know, deeper technical questions around what camera can do as a, as a what if tool for the swine industry, please ask those questions and we'll have Fossil here to address those as well. But exciting stuff here. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Edward and he can do the heavy lifting here for us. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for the invite. Very nice to be here. We're going to go through some slides just to give you an idea of what is camera. We can also go in depth on another session, or you can email us with questions. The idea is for you to know what, what camera can do. The first is our value proposition what camera intends to do and the value lies in because it seeks to increase hog farm profits. That's the first part. We want to increase farm profits, but we don't want to do it in a way that is difficult for the farmer to implement. So what we do is optimizing the available resources. If I can optimize what they already have or they have resources to increase the operation, we can measure how good or not is uh, that investment and how the profits will benefit. So in basic proposition is increase profits optimize, through optimizing available resources. <clears throat> so what is camera? 
Simply put, it's a decision-making tool for hog production. It helps us as a, any other tool would, and it can be used uh, alone or in conjunction with other predictive analytics tools you may be using right now. This one is a predictive analytics algorithm that is based on three legs. Once, one of them is science, and if it's not scientific, uh, scientifically proven, it's not in camera, it's not inside the algorithm. The other part is the mathematical modeling, which is very complex, and your farm, the farms or the farmers' KPIs. Uh, so what we do is we add to math and science, which are universal, we add the KPIs of the farm, thereby making it a custom solution. It's used in the wean to finish or grow to finish phases in hog production. We don't do anything on the farming side. And focuses on predicting financial performance when a change is introduced. This prediction, the quality of the prediction was tried in protocol by KSU, Kansas State uh, University, and they ran the prediction. They predicted some outcomes with camera, and then they tested in live animals to see what was the quality or the precision of the prediction. And this is a published study, and we they measured three variables. Two of them came with flying colors, very close to 100% accuracy, plus minus 3%. One of them was plus minus 10%. But given it's live animals in four or five months, I, I guess that's pretty good. Everything starts with record, the records of the farm. As I said, all the KPIs of the farm are what feeds camera. So, Let's talk a little bit about record keeping. I guess the ledger book is what people used at some point to take records of everything, including farming. You would be surprised to know that some farms still use this type of records. Then we've, we have this great technological leap into analysis sheets that were better, but it was, it was something good for the time. After that, in 1978, the advent of the, the spreadsheets was, of course, the same rows and columns, but now much useful in that you can change things and move around pieces. So very good. We're still using them today. And there are some farms that use complex formulation formulas in an Excel spreadsheet with several tabs and everything, and, and they're good. You know, it's, it's okay, but then the thing keeps moving. Now we have around the turn of the century, a software that's specific for swine operations. So we keep records there. We, this thing keeps moving. So now we have IoT, we have sensors and we have ways of collecting data that are more and more technologically advanced. But up to here, we have collect, we have learned all these decades to collect that data. Now every every so often we get better at it. But but what do we do with that information? That is the question. So that is what camera does. We take that information from your records and we process it. So so we can work with it and formulate predictions. So how does it work? So given that you have good records, now let's use them effectively. But the thing is, one of the best features of camera is that it uses genetics, management, and nutrition combined at the same time to improve profits. In other words, when we run the algorithm, it's looking from areas where to take and where to give. So it comes up with a perfect solution profit-wise. So camera doesn't forget. It's more than, it has more than 2,000 variables in it. 
and plus the interactions amongst them. So you get into, you know, 2000 variables and uh, one change, well, it's 2000 options. But if you have two, then you jump into the thousands and then in three, you jump to the millions of, of equations. This is humanly impossible to achieve and it's very difficult to do with an Excel spreadsheet, which is linear and, and it's, it's, you know, hog production is not linear, it's, it's live animals and it's a curve. So that's one of the advantages of camera too. Camera, it's a service. So there's no software package. There's nothing to install, nothing to learn, nothing to operate. And so you only provide us with information camera requires and we do the rest. To illustrate a little bit the flow of what's, what we have now and what we intend to have in the future. You have your farm and you do data collection to now you have all you need after the, the production and you painstakingly take all the information and you collect the data. With that, you enter it into a software. So you have a cost of data collection, you have a cost for data entry, and you have a cost of the software you use for record keeping. So what does that produce? Not everybody, but so far, what produces is a historic archive. It's a rear view mirror where you can see what happened. But when you try to use it for decision-making, you find that you have disconnected KPIs, times, cost, like it's not the same, uh, the last cycle, which was spring and summer, than the one you're starting in fall, winter. Even if you have uh, climate control houses, you cannot climate control the roads that are frozen or, or the, uh, the processing plant or the feed meal. So there's a lot of variations in, in times. The cost of corn and soybean meal change every day. So forget about six months ago. Events happen all the time. Transportation costs are going up. You know the problems we have right now with the supply chain. So things happen today that didn't happen or did, did not happen before or vice versa. So it's very hard to drive insight from, from this type of information. So we said there must be a better way. And what we do is we take that information you have in your database, we format it in a way that camera accepts it, we run it through the algorithm, and we do modeling and optimization. The options are there for analysis of the farmer. They decide whether it's the EBITDA, what he's looking for to increase or some KPI, and, and then he decides to implement. So, so the green route here is much more uh, of an educated decision when you bring it back to the farm than the original route. So I hope this give you a, gives you an idea of what we're intending to do here. This is just to illustrate how all the variables have interaction among them. So these little hand watch hands on each circle, it's a needle that moves and thereby moving the rest of the system and everything goes to profit, to ref reflects in profit. So the idea when I say camera doesn't forget is when we try to make a calculation of what's going to happen in the future, we tend to forget some uh, KPIs that are important. And again, it's, it's very, very difficult to, you know, remember everything, especially with a pen and paper. Excel helps, but it's, it's not the same with an, an algorithm. So how to start using camera? Again, we collect the data, to, we create a baseline. And what's the baseline? It's nothing other than a photograph of where we are right now. Usually 
we take the average of the past 12 months. And now with the, every time we introduce a variable, we compare it against that baseline. And we look at the drivers the farmer is seeking. The first one obviously is EBITDA uh, margin. We want that to grow. But sometimes it's not that. Sometimes it's, uh, it's not going to grow, but he needs some KPI to move in certain direction because of the processing plant, because the demand, whatever. So at least he wants to know what is going to be the outcome of moving that variable. <clears throat> By the way, producing results that like that against a variable, it's, it's very difficult to do in any operation because it implies input from different function areas, be that production, nutrition, the CFO, the pressure. There's there, uh, several voices in a farm that collaborate to get to a uh, result. Here, everything is already in. So it takes probably from one hour to one day to solve a, a very, very, very complex problem. And we don't need everybody to come on a meeting and tell us their inputs. We have it already. So we just introduce one variable and see what the outcome is. So once we have the information, we calibrate to replicate the KPIs of the farm, be that age, weight, at market, feed conversion, etc. And also we calibrate to the PNL of the last 12 months. So that's our data, our, our uh, baseline now. After we have the baseline, we run all the requested variables. We analyze the options and implement or not. Sometimes the change looks good on paper, but not in camera. So it gives us a, a loss. So we, we do not implement. But if we, if we do not implement, then we can look for alternatives. The baseline more or less looks like this. What we do is we have several items here, but I want to call your attention to net margin. That's what I want to see first. And I want to see my KPIs, conversion rate, weight, mortality, and age. That's what I'm going to give. Well, there's several more uh, things in the uh, or items in, in the report, but just for illustration purposes, I'm just uh, showing you this portion. And the farmer has to okay this. He has to say, yes, that was my revenue. That was my feed cost. That was my cost of piglets. So yes, this is my margin. So these are my KPIs. So everything is correct and calibrated. So now he asks us for a run. And he says, I have this supplier who wants to sell me X thing, could be a medicine, could be a sanitizing product, could be anything, that or additive in the, in the feed, that is going to give me, he's, he's saying that for a cost, he's going to reduce in three, by 3% 3 my feed conversion. So how do we calculate that using the entire farm? because now we have a virtual farm here. We have the farm in virtual mode and we can experiment all we want without killing animals or doing any harm. And so now we try and increase the cost of, he's gonna give us the cost of this change and we calculate the benefit. So what we do is, oh, sorry. Sometimes this, okay, here, this is the 3%. We went from fifth conversion of this to this. This is 3% improvement. Nothing else changes, but the algorithm runs everything on the background and tells us that there's a difference of half a million dollars in that 3% improvement. And so whatever the cost is, we know as you can see here, we didn't input any cost, but at least you, we can do it and it will subtract it from this profit. But you have right now the, an idea of how much you can pay for this input that leaves you with a good 
return on investment. You know, so if it's a hundred dollars, a hundred thousand dollars a year, and you can make five hundred off of that, well, your return on investment is great. So this is just a sample of how camera would work. How do we start working with a, a farmer? We have a contract, it's probably three pages, but the, the idea is that it has a non-disclosure agreement. So the farmer feels comfortable giving us a sensitive information, which is needed for camera. We need to calibrate the baseline. Uh, we get approval. Uh, we know that we're working with a good baseline. And we start introducing variables as the, this is driven by the farmer. They are the ones who have to call us and let us know or send us an email and say, I, I'm confronted with this issue. How do we use camera to solve it? And that's how everything starts. What information we need for this baseline? Well, it's pretty basic information. Remember how we were talking about records? If you have your uh, big champs or your big no or any software like that would give you in a report all this information. For the past 12 months, that's what we prefer. But to be, you know, something that is representative of representative of your results. So mortality, feed conversion, production, cost of pig, price per pound paid at, on average of, in the year, feed delivery cost, hours to processing, your revenue, your feed cost, baby cost, your genetic expression as a start of the weight and finish of weight, finishing weight starting age and finishing age and the idle time and, you know, feed type. So this is basically information that is readily available for a farm that keeps good records. And those records can come from, uh, as I said, a, a hog uh, program, or it could be IOT for those that are using it with sensors and everything. Eventually those go to a database that's collecting the data and, and this is a way to maximize your investment in those sensors and those programs, because then we can uh, plug it here and, and start uh, projecting or that, so predicting future outcomes. On the nutrition side, we ask for the ingredients and their cost, the diets on that phase, and the nutritional requirements, the the nutritionist is looking for and the environment uh, in the farm. So that's pretty much, uh, again, this is information that is easily collect, uh, you can collect it very easy. So that's it. And I'm here to answer your questions. Awesome, thank you, Edward. Thanks for walking us through. Now we have some, some time for Q and A. As I mentioned, the best way to ask a question is we have two options. You can type it in the Q&A pane or raise your hand and you can ask directly. But Edward, while, while uh, people are deliberating on what questions to ask, you know, we'd love to hear kind of where you are from a, from a commercialization point of view, you know, how the how the product has evolved over the last couple of years since we've since we last spoke with with Ryan and kind of what the next you know 12 months 12 18 months look like and and how this will continue to be commercialized 12 18 months look horrible <laughs> it was the pandemic so uh, yeah. let me just give you some background when i came in we have to re re, re rearrange the way we're going to work with camera took some time some doing some learning curve and then we launched and then we onboarded a farm that is very very large and start working with them and then the pandemic hit and everything slowed down so now and that was in latin america so we were doing working in latin america so right now we are launching in the united states and when i'm saying that i'm talking about the last two weeks so it's very, very new. It's beta testing right now in the U.S., but we have 
the Walla group has a lot of experience in other species and they, they know that this product, and I've seen it, I mean, I've seen it work and I've seen it provide very, very good insights to the farmer. And so I'm very confident that this is something that for the farmer, not only would allow him to use his records, you know, he's spending a lot of money in collecting and processing, but not, they're, start, they're not using them. So this is a way of using your records in a way that can uh, predict uh, the outcome of a change in your system. So that's where we are right now. Got it. And what are you seeing in terms of ROI and margin improvement? You know, I know margins are, are tight in this industry. And, you know, sometimes there are, there are some price swings. I guess how, how, how dependent on broader macro factors are you for, to make this, you know, fit in? Well, it depends because we have several uh, things that we can try in camera. And you, if it's just regular things, probably the, the first runs are going to be good, but as time goes by, we can get into it more and more in depth. Let's say a farm buys a near analyzer. Well, now we have a lot of variables that we can input. We can put the, input the correct lysing percentage in your soybean. We can put the right energy in your corn. So, so those are variables that we can process and it, it affects the whole system. So if we, you know, we can tell you what would happen if you leave the animals one or two extra days before sending to the processing plant. That would not imply a lot of work, but it's major. We, that was an, a real life event uh, that happened and they wanted to, they intended to leave the animals two extra days to gain more weight, but they forgot that mortality at that point is very expensive. So uh, yes, the, the ones that survived gained a little more weight, but it's the worst time to gain weight and they eat a lot and they die more. So that's in the millions of dollars. And so, so they were really thankful to have run that uh, thing that they were planning on doing to see where the drivers were, uh, were moving to give us that answer. So could be a hundred thousand dollar improvement could be millions. So it, the range is very, very big, depending on the, what the farmer is doing and how in depth he wants to go in camera. Because again, we can do very in depth. Got it. Phil Kerr has a question. Phil says, thanks for the interesting summary with many of these key inputs not being static, but rather dynamic across time scales and territories. Does camera have the ability to deal with this dynamic nature of these parameters? Yes, we can change as long as we have the knowledge of what the change is, we can put it in camera and run it and it will tell us right away what's going to happen with that change. So it's very, very dynamic. Great. Well, Edward, I see you have your, your email here. I guess this is the best way to, to reach out uh, to you, but you know, I like to end these conversations with asking the, the entrepreneurs and the team presenting how best can the people listening uh, now and retrospectively to the recording, how can they help you and uh, the camera system? By trying it. They have to try it and see for themselves the benefits of it. And I'm sure they're going to like it. Fantastic. Easy enough. <laughs> well, thank you all for your time. Really appreciate it. Fazel, Edward, Gavin, and Ryan for joining us today. Congrats on your progress. I'd also like to thank the audience for their participation and remind them we host these every, every Thursday at 3 p.m. As, as I mentioned, if you want to share this with a friend, we welcome you to do so. Uh, a replay will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours, and new viewers can register for upcoming conversations and for our 
back catalog by going to agrifoodconversations.com. So next week, we'll kick off our month on poultry technologies. We'll be joined by Matthew Wadiak and Anchor Agrawal of Cooks, a vertically integrated ag company offering beef and chicken while operating solely on regenerative ag and, and regenerative farmland. So again, thanks everyone for their time, and we hope to see you next week. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, Tom.